Our next speaker is uh, Cara Bernstein, uh, talking about the concerted function of the shoe complex and the RAD51 paralogs in RAD51 presynaptic assembly. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to present my work to you today. Um, our lab is focused on the repair of double strand breaks, which is one of the most lethal types of DNA damage. Every day, our cells um, repair 50 natural double strand breaks, which correlates to a frequency of one double strand break per 10 to the eighth base pairs per cell cycle. Unrepaired double strand breaks are lethal, and some of the most common cancer therapeutics rely on irreparable double strand breaks to mediate cell death. Uh, after a double strand break occurs, um, there are multiple pathways that can be utilized to repair the damage, and two of the main pathways are shown here. During non-homologous end joining, the DNA ends are re-ligated together, um, and this is a potentially uh, error-prone repair pathway, whereas during homologous recombination, homologous template is used, to re uh, used for repair, and so it's generally considered error-free. Um, Homologous recombination relies on a homologous template for repair um, and is used to repair spontaneous breaks that can occur uh, during DNA replication and um, in response to genetic toxic chemicals or physical agents. So after a double strand break occurs, the DNA ends are resected and coated by the single strand of DNA binding protein RPA. Subsequently, RAD51 um, displaces RPA and forms filaments. And this is really a critical and central step of homologous recombination because RAD51 filaments are essential for the homology search and strand invasion steps that define homologous recombination. And so this step is very um, highly regulated. So in budding yeast, RAD51 filament formation is promoted by the RAD51 mediators. These include RAD52, which you heard about from Rodney, and the RAD51 paralogs, RAD55, and RAD57. These are proteins that bear structural resemblance to RAD51. In humans, um, BRCA2 forms an analogous function to RAD52, and the RAD51 paralogs include RAD51, B, C, D, XRCC2, and 3. So about 10 years ago, um, my postdoctoral mentor, Rodney Rothstein, um, who you heard from, um, discovered a novel complex of proteins called the SHU complex. And he showed that the SHU complex um, functioned the homologous recombination, but its function remained unknown. So today I'm going to show you how the SHU complex functions um, during RAD51 filament formation with the other RAD51 mediators. So the SHU complex um, in budding yeast consists of four proteins, and these proteins are differentially color-coded because although they are in the same complex, they do exhibit some unique phenotypes. They're important for resistance to DNA damaging agents, um, particularly methylmethane sulfonate, um, for suppressing mutations and gross chromosomal rearrangements, the latter of which was shown by Richard Kolodner's group. So the, yeast, the shoe complex is conserved in humans, although the exact components are not completely known. And mutations um, in the yeast, like the yeast shoe complex, the human shoe complex is composed of RAD51 paralogs, which are proteins that bear structural resemblance to RAD51. So mutations in the human RAD51 paralogs are associated with cancer predisposition and Fanconi anemia. Um, particularly breast and ovarian cancers. And despite hundreds of epidemiological studies linking mutations in the, RAD, with, in the RAD51 paralogs to cancer, we actually have very little understanding of their function. There have been a number of reasons for that, um, including uh, the low abundance and insolubility of the human uh, proteins and the embryonic lethality observed in the mouse knockout models. And so this has really necessitated the use of other model systems to understand their function, such as yeast. So we wanted to address the question of um, what does the shoe, what's the role of the shoe complex in the RAD51 paralogs in, during homologous recombination. And so um, I'm going to show you how we show that the shoe complex acts to synergistically promote RAD51 nucleation and presynaptic filament assembly that we've defined the molecular lesions that the shoe complex is important to repair, 
and that we found that it's important to repair DNA damage upon, uh, during DNA replication. So um, to determine where the shoe complex may be functioning during homologous recombination, we first asked whether or not the shoe complex um, could bind to specific DNA substrates. So we purified uh, two of the shoe complex um, components, the DNA binding components, CSM2 and PSY3. Uh, the purification schematic is shown here. And by fluorescence anisotropy, we find that they preferentially bind to fork DNA substrates and then also to three prime DNA overhangs. And we were really excited about these results because these were DNA um, structures that are utilized during homologous recombination. So then we asked whether or not the shoe complex proteins um, could interact with other proteins that also like to bind these same type of structures, such as RAD52 and RAD55 and RAD57. So by yeast 2 hybrid, we find um, that CSM2 um, exhibits a yeast 2 hybrid interaction with RAD55. So this is one of the shoe complex members, and these are plates, um, minus histidine plates, um, and also with RAD57. And then in collaboration with Patrick Sung at Yale, we showed that um, CSM2 and PSY3 actually directly interact with RAD55 and RAD57. So based upon these experiments, and many of which I don't have time to share with you today, we created a shoe complex interaction network where RAD55 and RAD57 bridges an interaction between the shoe complex and the other RAD51 mediators. But does this actually have a function? So in collaboration with Patrick Sung, um, we did an in vitro assay to, measure, to determine if the shoe complex had a role in RAD51 filament formation and strand exchange. And in this assay, a single strand of DNA, we looked for a product formation between a single strand of DNA and a double strand of DNA that is radioactively labeled. So um, in lane two, we see RAD51 mediated product formation shown here. But if you pre-incubate the single strand of DNA with RPA, then you completely prevent RAD51 mediated product formation. And really the role of these mediators is to overcome the inhibitory effects of RPA. And so we begin to see some RAD51 mediated product formation in the presence of RAD52. This is stimulated by RAD55 and RAD57 in lane nine, but we see the most amount of stimulation in the presence of the shoe complex. This is a two to three fold stimulation. So this work provides the first direct evidence for a role for the shoe complex in RAD51 filament formation, finally giving some clues as to its mechanistic function. And so based upon um, our biochemistry experiments, we were now able to place the shoe complex with working with the other RAD51 mediators during RAD51 filament formation. But one of the puzzling things um, that we noticed is that disruption of the shoe complex members, um, these four up here, uh, leads to sensitivity to the DNA damaging agent, uh, methyl methane sulfonate, MMS. Um, these are yeasts that are five-fold serially diluted onto rich medium or rich medium that can these, contain these different DNA damaging agents. Um, but not to sensitivity uh, to many other DNA damaging agents. So we see mild sensitivity to this uh, top one inhibitor, uh, camptothecan, um, but we didn't see sensitivity of the shoe complex members to ionizing radiation, uh, etoposide, which caused double strand breaks, to hydroxyurea, which stalls DNTP pools, UV, which causes thymine dimers, and uh, hydrogen peroxide, which causes oxidative damage. Um, whereas one of the other RAD51 paralogs, RAD55, seems to have a broader range of sensitivity. And so this suggests that perhaps the shoe complex was important for, for, for uh, repairing specific types of DNA lesions. Um, furthermore, we find using, um, using a chromosome reconstitution assay uh, and pulse field gel electrophoresis that um, cells that are arrested in S phase and exposed to um, MMS um, CSM2 disrupted cells exhibit a delay in re reconstitution of their chromosomes. So in this assay, the cells are arrested in alpha factor, on G1 with alpha factor, released into S phase and then exposed to MMS. Um, and we can monitor um, their chromosomes uh, by pulse field, gel for pulse field gel electrophoresis where each band 
represents a distinct chromosome. And you can see in wild type cells, they reconstitute their chromosomes by 60 minutes, whereas CSM2 disrupted cells um, have a delay in reconstituting their chromosomes. So these results are consistent um, with the SHU complex um, binding to, preferentially binding to four DNA structures and suggest that perhaps the SHU complex was important for repairing these DNA, inter DNA intermediates during S phase. And I should uh, note that we didn't see the same results when we um, looked at uh, G1 cells or G2M cells. Okay, so what are the MMS-induced lesions that the SHU complex is important to repair? So um, MMS is a, um, is a DNA alkylating agent that leads to N3-methyladenines and N7-methylguanines. And these um, types of lesions are primarily repaired by the base excision repair pathway. And uh, really, it's only when the replication fork encounters one of the base excision repair intermediates um, that, that could potentially lead to a double strand break, that homologous recombination would then be important to repair. And so this is the base excision repair pathway. And what you can do is um, actually use um, yeast genetics to knock out specific base excision repair intermediates and cause accumulation, or uh, proteins and cause accumulation of these DNA intermediates and ask, is the shoe complex important to repair this damage? So for example, disruption of MAG1 leads to accumulation of alkylated base damage whereas disruption of APN1 and APN2 primarily leads to accumulation of three prime DRPs, but there are some other um, lesions can, that can accumulate as well. And so we combined um, shoe complex mutant CSM2 with all these different base excision repair proteins and asked um, what is the shoe complex important to repair these lesions. And I'm just, for the interest of time, gonna show you a few of the results we found with APN1 and APN2 disruption. So um, whereas CSM2 mutants and APN1 and APN2 mutants are sensitive to MMS, the triple mutant exhibits an increased sensitivity to MMS. And so to determine whether or not um, APN1, whether or not uh, the contribution of these proteins to uh, DNA recombination, we used a direct repeat recombination assay where there's two leucine heteroalleles with an intervening uh, wild type Euro 3 marker. And so gene conversion, uh, so the repair of this to a wild type leucine can occur by three different mechanisms. So one mechanism is RAD51 dependent called gene conversion, and this would re result in a wild type leucine allele um, and maintaining the intervening Euro 3 locus. Whereas in single strand annealing, which is RAD51 independent, um, and this uh, case, the DNA ends are resected until there's some over, overlapping regions, and then the wild-type leucine is formed. And so in wild-type cells, there's approximately equal amounts of gene conversion and single-strand annealing, whereas in a CSM2 mutant, there's fewer gene conversion events and more single-strand annealing events. And this is consistent with CSM2 being important for RAG51 filament formation. Whereas in APN1 and APN2, there's more um, recombination, likely due to um, collapsed replication forks. And uh, notice that the distribution events is the same as wild type, even though they're both elevated. Now, if we now disrupt CSM2, we see a decrease in um, RAD51 mediated gene conversion, suggesting that the three prime DRPs that accumulate in an AP1, APN2 require the SHU complex protein CSM2 in order to be repaired by homologous recombination. Consistent with this notion, we find that APN1, APN2, CSM2 cells exhibit um, more RAD52 foci and single strain of DNA as measured by RFA1 foci uh, by fluorescent microscopy. So if the shoe complex, if, if these cells are not repairing um, their DNA damage through homologous recombination, well, how is it being repaired? And so we measured um, rates of uh, mutations using this cannabinine one assay, which would look for, um, which would be, mutations would be caused by um, increases in translesion synthesis pathway, which would be able to bypass these lesions. And we find that a CSM2, APN1, and APN2 double mutant now exhibit 125-fold increase in mutation rates, and that these in increased mutation rates are dependent upon the translesion synthesis genes. 
And so in summary, upon MMS damage, uh, base excision repair intermediates, if the replication fork encounters one of these intermediates or if we force it to by disrupting APN1 and APN2, this can, can result in stalled or collapsed replication forks. And the shoe complex would then be important for shifting the balance of repair towards homologous recombination uh, through its role in RAF51 filament formation and away from other error-prone pathways such as translation synthesis. And so with that, I'd like to thank the members of my, um, of my lab who contributed to this work and to our wonderful collaborators, um, particularly Patrick Sung, um, to our funding sources. And um, just to note that I have some postdoctoral positions available if you're interested in. And please go and uh, visit Ben's poster. Thank you. <laughs>